Babies born tomorrow and for years to come will inherit tens of trillions in federal promises made to their parents, vast promises in programs such as Social Security and Medicare that the government has no plan to pay for, meaning someone, perhaps everyone, will be hurt. And it could get worse with a new report set to be released any day now. With me to discuss your future and your children's uh, are Steve Moore, chief economist for the Heritage Foundation, and Maya McGinnis, president of the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget. Thanks for joining us, guys. Hi, Jim. Now, let me ask you first. Uh, we've got 10,000 baby boomers a day <laughs> who are retiring for the next 20 years. That's right. Uh, that means we're going to have a lot of people collecting benefits. Uh, let me ask Maya first. Maya, how short are we in having enough money to cover all the promised benefits that the government has made? Oh, on both the programs, Social Security and Medicare, our promises far exceed the revenues that are planned to come into the program. And, and on the path that we're on right now, within one decade, basically the trust funds for Medicare are going to be in the red, not, not having enough money to pay benefits. And the same is true for two decades from now in Social Security. And if you look at the huge divide between what we've promised and what we can spend, you'd have to reduce benefits across the board for everybody who depends on those programs all of a sudden if we wait until the last moment by as much as 20 percent in health care, Medicare, 25 percent, almost 25 percent cut in Social Security benefits if we don't make changes before we reach those dates where the trust funds really run out of funds. Um, and so the divide is quite large, uh, and filling them is going to be one of the biggest challenges we have in our federal budget. Now, Steve, we're, we're basically tens of trillions uh, short <laughs> That's of being... trillion with a T, not, <laughs> with a, not T, not the, a big with T, a big T, right. the big T, right. <laughs> tens of trillions short of having right. enough money to pay everything we've yeah. promised. We've known this for... 20, 30 years. Right. I mean, well, so this is not something that's surprising right. us. It's just Congress refuses to act to do something about that. I mean, I call this the biggest act of fiscal child abuse in the history of America because who's going to be yeah. left yeah. holding these trillions of dollars of, of costs? It's going to be, you know, my children, your children. Uh, you know, there's 75 to 80 million baby boomers, as you said, over the next uh, 20 years that are going to be retiring. We don't know where the funds are going to come from to pay for it. Well, the government's great at giving things away. It's not very exactly. good at taking things away from people, and that's what's required here. Uh, Maya, let me ask you, you were talking about Social Security. Uh, it runs out of sufficient funds. It can only pay out what it takes in. It runs out of sufficient funds to pay full benefits in 2033, uh, meaning an overnight 25% cut. So if you're against any sort of changes in Social Security, that means you're in favor of a 25% cut in benefits. Yeah, I have to say that's one of the things that's most confused me about the fight over Social Security, and it is such a fight. This is one of the single most polarizing policy issues there is, where uh, people are in severe disagreement about whether there's a problem or not, you know, whether it's part of the budget or not, all of these things. It, it doesn't matter how you think about the accounting of Social Security. If you want to protect the people who depend on Social Security the most, the worst thing you could do is nothing which is what we're doing right now. And like you said, if your plan is to do nothing, your plan is basically that, to settle for this horrible across the board 25% per, 25 cut for benefits. And that would hit the poorest seniors who depend on the program. Whereas if we made smart, sensible choices now, you could look at both sides, you could look at revenues, you could look at spending. But importantly, you could look at phasing and changes so gradually and in targeted ways so that people who depend on the program is protected and we could actually make structural changes that would keep these well, programs balanced yeah. and doing what they're supposed to be doing, providing benefits for people who need them. Well, what's going to make the problem a lot worse is you've seen this over the last four or five years. What have we seen in the labor force? A record number of people dropping out of the workforce. Right. I predict to you uh, on this show that when we get this new uh, trustees report that the, the bankruptcy date is going to be moved closer because we have millions of people who are disappearing from their labor force. When they're not working, Jim, they're not paying payroll taxes to fund, uh, to fund seniors' uh, checks. And by the way, the people who are dropping out in largest numbers are young people. Now, one That's last question problem. for both of you. The president had in there a change in the cost of living increase. Right. It was, would have amounted to about 025 percent, right. one quarter of one percent uh, off the future increase in benefits, not off the current benefit level, but off the future increase. And the president backed off of it. Well, Maya, why? 
Well, I have to say I thought this was one of the most sensible changes that you could make because uh, what it does is it corrects the way that we measure inflation. Right now we overstate it and it's merely a technical change that would fix how we, we measure inflation. And that would mean that the increases in future Social Security benefits would be more accurate, an accurate reflection of that increase. Uh, the problem, again, is that as yeah. soon as you talk about anything that touches Social Security, the political boat, you know, arrows come out and people are vicious on this. And we haven't had a sensible national discussion yet. And it's really going to hurt the program well, you know, and people who need I have, it. I have three kids that are about to hopefully enter the workforce if they can get a job. You know, the, the <laughs> solution for young people clearly is to convert this system into a kind of personal account system where people, young people can put a percentage of their payroll tax dollars into a personal account that they own that Congress can't steal for them. We can still pay the benefits to seniors, but for okay. future generations, that's the kind of thing I think is the only way that young people listening to the show are ever going to see a pension benefit. All right. Thanks very much, Steve and Maya. We appreciate it.